So I'm going to show you how to do P1 at higher and rages. The main problem that people have with phase one is clearing the tendrils. So the point of this rotation is to show you how to clear it by lining up your last tick of your sunshine with when Telos does his special attack. And the point of that is that when you're in sunshine normally, the buff from Maniacal, the damage buff, doesn't actually stack with sunshine but it does on the last tick of your sun. So you'll get sun and maniacal in that last tick, and that tick is the one that you want to clear the tendrils on. So it's very specific what you what abilities you use in order to line that up, but as I go through it, uh, hopefully it makes more sense and you can see which stuns are being used when and for which reasons. Okay, so one of the things that you need to do um, before you start doing Telos is uh, get used to manual spell casting. It's a setting in the combat settings um, and what the benefits are is that you can have Blood Barrage set as your main hand and offhand spell for example but then you can cast lower tiered spells, get the benefit of those lower tiered spells like rune costs or any other benefit that the spell gives but it gives you the damage of the Blood Barrage that you've set as your main hand and offhand so this is important for things like using metamorphosis if you meta with uh, a blood spell and then you use an ice spell if you don't have manual spell casting then you won't get boosted damage for that ice spell whereas if you have manual spell casting it you get the benefit of the ice spell breaking the freedom or you could stack it with rack and you actually get the damage from the metamorphosis as well so there's a few benefits that I'll go through in the sort of guides that I'll be presenting, but um, it's very important that you use it in order to maximize how much damage you're going to get. And just showing which runes I have in my each of my pouches. So this relies on borrowed power uh, from Livid Farm being set as Entangle, and that means that you won't need to bring nature runes with you and you can just cast borrowed power from lunas and that's how you're going to deal with entangle in later parts of the kill in p4 and p5 as soon as you jump down uh, you want to use a dummy and just concentrate a blast it for the extra crit, crit chance walk back in and use auto into tsunami and just build up to 100% so if either of the auto or tsunami crit, then you get an extra 10% of gem. Go right into natural instinct. And when you hit 82%, you can dismiss the dummy, because your next ability is going to give you 18% of gem. So I use anticipate, then lose my target by just spamming a basic ability, and go straight into devotion. You can prepare a Von bomb like this. So... On the second tick of Devotion, you want to Surge and then Sunshine and throw the Volm Bomb. Now as it comes up to the end of the GCD here, I still haven't used Target Cycle. So you want to use Target Cycle just as it hits the GCD and then use Blood Debreath at the same time. And that will make sure that Telos is uh, your target as soon as it's possible. So Blood Debreath straight into IOH Hammer. And you use a Ring of Vigor for that, because sometimes you won't have the Adren if you don't get any Impatient procs. Now use, a, use your Inquisitor's Staff and uh, walk the boss, so use Combust. And here this is where the manual spellcasting comes in, because you're going to use um, Dual Wield Blood Freedom. But if you don't have manual spellcasting on it, it'll cast both of the Dual Wields. So you want to make sure that you're only using one. So you cast Dual World Freedom, and this auto attack is just one auto from Freedom. And now you put your staff on, and because Freedom lets you cast the auto straight after it, that's the purpose of using that defensive in the start of P1, so that you can line up the auto three ticks after, and you don't need to four tick, for example. So now I instantly use Ice Rack, just to break his freedom. 
and go straight into Concentrated Blast. So this spot that I'm stood on here is to line up for the for the next part where I'm going to relure Telos so that I can stay on his west side. So I go straight into three hits fix, deep impact, blood rack, and as you blood rack you want to start running to the east. And on the second tick of blood rack, very much in the same way that you surged on the second tick of devotion, on the second tick of blood rack, you're going to want to escape and then use deep breath. So you've escaped back into your sun to put you on the west of Telos. Now, after deep breath, use blood impact just to stun him. And then dual wheel combust. And then auto rack. And then go straight into detonate. So this is where he casts his tendrils. And I've still got one second left on my sun. And as his tendrils, as he actually casts the tendrils spec, that's when I use blood, detto, and wild magic in the same tick. And since I'm on the west of Telos, which is the whole point of the relur, all my hits will land really quickly because um, the amount of time that it takes a hit to land is based on the position of the boss. So if you're on the west of him, then hits will land quicker, which is a bit... It's a bit weird, but that's why you need to really lure yourself to be in the west of him. So, blood, detto, wild magic, and you're on the west, and it's in the last tick of your sunshine, and you have maniacal boost because it's in the last tick of your sunshine. Walk under him, and then surge bladed dive to the corner. Um, if you bladed dive surge, then you can be more accurate, but it's uh, it doesn't really matter, just get close to the northeast corner so you can jump into P2. And that's phase one for when Telos is walking west. Okay, so I'm just going to cover what happens if Telos is walking south. So I just went over what happens when he walks west. If he walks east, then you're naturally going to be on the west of him, so there's no need to relure, there's no different movement tricks you need to do. So I won't cover that, and he can't walk north, so that's all bases covered. And the difference here is that when he walks south, you can just take a little bit of advantage of that, and you can flinch some mage hits, because they they take a, they do a lot less damage than melee hits do. Um, so it's around 6k for a melee hit maximum, and around 2-4k to 4K for a mage hit Um so just jump right into this. I won't cover the rotations because it's the abilities themselves stay the same. It's just how you move when you realize that he's walking south. So I saw that he was walking south just when I've combusted here. And so I spin my camera just so that I'm sort of being able to look along this line here because He's not going to be moving in this direction, so it's just a little bit easier to see from this perspective. So straight after you ice rack, he's going to be stood there for like a tick, and you can run away and flinch a mage hit here. So just pray mage. And then I'm going to flinch one with the dragon breath as well. So just after rack, he breaks his freedom and D breath, walk two squares north, and then just walk back into your sun. And that's about it for if he's walking south, you just need to make sure that you're on the west of him at the end. And everything stays the same, you just make your way to the northeast corner. Okay, that's the end of the P1 guide. If you do have any questions about it, then just let me know and I'll try and get back to you. Um, as for if something goes wrong, it will usually go wrong around tendrils, so just make sure to reflect after your deep breath, um, eat up and then just make sure that once you phase it you adjust your P2 rotation depending on how many autos Telos did after the tendrils. Um, but that's everything, I hope you enjoyed and thanks for watching, I'll get a P2 guide out soon.